uh, we'll go ahead and uh, start with our good news with Art. Okay, just a, a few things for you there. Uh, first one, full disclosure, uh, it was Pi Day, and I know Pi is 3.14. I do not know what comes after that. But Mr. Singleton had a contest with his kids uh, right before spring break, and the winner took it out to 140 digits. Oh and second God. place took it out to 130. Wow. That sounds uh, terrible. So he had some, some fun little uh, trophies and things you can see on the table there for that. So that was uh, one thing was Pi Day. Uh, That's cool. And then uh, there was an update from uh, middle school, high school gifted, talented teacher Cindy Bauer also uh, regarding National History Day. And they ended up having to finish that with virtual judging, uh, but, but shared the results of some kids that did very well there uh, with their National History Day contest. Uh, then I had a couple of staff videos I shared. You know, one, one thing that um, teachers are really try to do, or teachers and other staff, is to stay in touch with kids during this time, and they share some kind of fun videos, and those have been out on social media as well. And the only other two things I had the good news then, um, I shared the link to the Indians Insider, which is the online newspaper that the kids have been working on this year. And then I shared a snowman, that was at, at uh, mid-April uh, lunch pickup. Yeah. You, I'm sure you all remember the <laughs> unwelcome snow we had a couple weeks ago. So. Uh, just, just a few things there, some of them uh, geared towards just kind of having some fun and, and making connection, which uh, is pretty important these times, too. Cool. Thank you, Art. All right, let's move on to the consent agenda. Sure, we have time to review it. So the, uh, you guys, good replace. Everybody likes the food service life. Good. That's great. If nobody else has questions, I'll move approval. Okay. Second. Motion made by Ken. Seconded by Lori. Any further board discussion? <coughs> Carolyn, I do have a question. Go ahead, how Carolyn. Often, how often do we use Braille? Not very often. Sign language, at all. which is that? Not very often at all, Jonah said. Okay. Any further discussion by the board? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. All right, next is our presentation by our high school principal. And, I, and to be fair, I told Mr. Seekers about more of a discussion and update than presentation. All right, so all right. I don't think it's a good presentation, but... Do you have some fireworks? Right? Well, it is, uh, yeah, it is a big topic, though, yeah. and, and one that's on a lot of people's minds and, and something Mr. Seaver has really been working on and uh, kind of want to get board reaction before we were past the point of no return, but it's, it's a really timely thing, too. So. I think there's quite a few listeners here. Yep. We're supposed yeah, to be stuck it on. Yeah, yep. they were calling me and asking how to get on it. Great. All right, so um, basically uh, we are tasked with how we are going to complete a graduation ceremony, and there are a lot of different ideas out there. Um, from small schools to large schools, it varies quite a bit. I think in some of your smaller schools, they're able to do uh, kind of a community-based handoff with diplomas, whereas it's not as uh, realistic, I don't think, for a bigger school, a larger school district. So what we've really thought a lot about is, can we put together a virtual ceremony that includes all of the major components of what a, a, a real-time graduation ceremony would provide. And to answer that question, I do think we can do that. Uh, from start to finish, uh, we, can, we can include um, professional photos within our presentation. We can record our speakers that would be speaking live the day of. Um, the things that we would miss and the things that would be difficult to, to accompany in, in even a live setting with today's regulations on social distancing would be the walking to their seats and the walking across the stage. Everything else I believe can be emulated with a virtual ceremony uh, and be fairly accurate and well put together. Um, from, from music to 
to having a diploma picture presented as a part of that walking across the stage component. Um, so what we would look at also within this would be to set up a photo shoot um, with uh, one of our community mm -hmm. photographers, uh, Tim O'Connell, Tom O'Connell has agreed to do that for us. He's the one that has typically done the pictures at the graduation itself. And within that, we would utilize the, or practice the social distancing with no more than 10 in a, a given area. Um, but within that process, we would ask if, if there would be any board um, members available to be a part of that picture. And instead of their traditional handshake diploma handoff, uh, we would actually just have the diploma cover and the picture would be like if I was standing up and a student was walking across, it would be a handoff like this with a professional picture taken. And that's what we would utilize as a part of our virtual ceremony. Mm -hmm. And then the student would then take their cover with them. That would also take care of us having to send out 250 diploma covers with diplomas. I mean, we would still uh, have to figure out the diploma itself piece, which is, is not a, a major issue for us. They will have caps and gowns for that photo as well. So again, we can incorporate that official graduation day look for all of our students. And then as we move through the ceremony, so we would start with the national anthem. We would have, or sorry, start with the pop and circumstance with senior photos going through on a slide deck. Then we would go to a national anthem with a, on our video, on a video board format, which I'll talk to you here next. And then from the national anthem, we would have our superintendent's welcome. We would have a student speaker. We would have a keynote speaker. And then we would go through the announcing of names, utilizing those, again, those professional pictures with that diploma handoff. And then at the end, we would actually have a compilation shot of all the graduates from that professional photo that's been taken. It will be put up as a, a whole group photo, which we have in our building of every graduation class. We would have that put together for that recessional piece where we're playing the student song. Um, and, and that would kind of end our program. Now that's the virtual side of it. That's with sound added. That would be a video link that could be shared out. Now to add to that and to kind of make it, I guess, more special for our group of seniors, I've looked into the showing of that in a drive-in format. Um, I've, I've been in touch with a company out of Des Moines, they're actually based in Des Moines and in California, um, but with California's shutdown, they've actually moved a lot of their, their equipment back this way. And um, we can maintain the May 24th date, and we can actually provide two Jumbotron screens, they're 10 foot by 36 foot screens, that transmit the sound through the FM, through FM frequency. So there's no outdoor speaker system that we'd have to be worried about. It is literally going through uh, your car stereo on an FM frequency that they tune in to be the, the, the best reception in that area. The area we would look at would be the parking by the Little League fields across the way on the other side of the stadium. Um, when we were over there, I counted that there were around 400, uh, maybe a little more than that, parking spots. Um, and in order to we don't have to maintain the exact social distancing, but to be mindful of it, the idea would be that we would have one vehicle per senior, and then we could space people out as much as possible. Uh, in talking with Warren County Health, the suggestion was that, you know, as long as people aren't out of their vehicles, windows are staying up, then, then they think that that would be doable as a drive-in format. Uh, I talked with Mr. Sadoff today about, you know, you've got myself, um, Kelly Rixner, Josh Lohman, Jay Hackett would be involved in, in kind of policing that, that scene, uh, going around making sure everybody's being mindful of, of those restrictions. And we would also communicate that out as well. You know, what's expected when you get here. Uh, we don't expect people to be out conversing with each other. You need to stay in your vehicle. And, uh, and then that would allow us an actual physical celebration for our seniors that day and not uh, and not just be sharing out that video to where they're watching in their homes. But the video component would allow anybody that would not be in attendance to also view that as well. And they would have that link and they could utilize that down the road. If they're able to have some type of a family get together for their, their student, then you know, so be it. They've got that as a nice touch to, to whatever they want to set up. So 
that's that's where we're at, and uh, those are my that's my idea for now. Um, there is a cost to those screens. We need to talk about that. Well, they're gonna they'll they'll approve the bill anyway, and, and it it is. I mean, it, it'd be more than we yeah, it'd be more than we typically spend on a graduation renting chairs or something. But uh, and I think chairs are typically four thousand. Yeah. So I mean, that's. Yeah. Have you reached out to any of the seniors or the senior um, families and? Gotten feedback I've, as far as what they think about this? I've gotten feedback from parents, and I think uh, I wouldn't say I, I reach out to all parents, but I've talked to different individuals with seniors specifically. And uh, the vibe that I'm getting is that they do want closure and they want something. And this has been an idea that they've been fairly receptive of. And we actually had some people randomly walk by when I had the company here kind of showing me what it would look like. And they, they were pretty excited that they thought it was a really great idea that we're being able to. I did see something similar. There was a, a large uh, funeral outdoors, and they had the same thing in a parking lot. The screens are, are they driven on like a flatbed truck? No, yeah, uh, these, are, these are a little different than that. So, but pretty similar about, yeah, idea. But right? think of a U Haul moving truck, an enclosed truck. Basically, it's a, I don't know if it's a 12 to 15 foot truck, and the sides of the truck just open up flat out, and then they raise it up about 10 foot in the air so that it's a, uh, just a giant screen that's been raised up, and they'll, they'll kind of uh, cover up some of the bottom so it doesn't look like there's a truck in front of it. When you were out there, uh, Jeff, you and Rob were out there, did they have, they had one screen out there at that time? Yep, yep. they had one screen at that time, and the, they would actually, we would bring a second one. And the visibility's good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. can see the one We were screen. sitting in the back uh, at the other end of the parking lot, and sun was bright and stuff that day, it was, I, I could see the movie playing and stuff, and that was just one of them. So if you had two, you would, yeah, you could look at one or the other, kind of like a large auditorium or church service sometimes where they had, but they were huge. <laughs> yeah, and huge. One, I mean, one, you could do it with one. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you there, but with the size of the area, and I think if you if you really want to, I mean, if you really want a good showing, I think that right. the two screens would be yeah. needed I mean, just, for, just for the view and some background so, information. Am I right? <laughs> presuming we're still. This is Carolyn. Nope. I've got I've got one comment to make. I guess I'm just kind of challenging whether it's worth it to have the the photo with the senior and have a board member because I would as a parent I probably the board member is nice but I wouldn't necessarily say that's needed to have a board member in close proximity to every student and then they go back with their extended families because they're back for graduation or something. I'm just kind of wondering if we need to have the board member or just have the picture taken with them holding a diploma. And that's, yeah, I think that's, that's a great question. Yeah. You know, and I think people's, people's comfort level probably varies uh, with what their situation is too. And uh, I think I think that's definitely worth considering. Could they request it if they want a board member there? I think it's going to be hard because the number of kids we're going to push through. I don't know how quickly and timely that would be. To, if I mean, if a board member would want to be there, sure. But I don't know if the kids are going to reach out necessarily for it specifically. Okay. But if we have somebody special in mind that we want to hand the diploma to, you know, that is something we've been. I don't. You, you haven't experienced that, that yet. Here, Mr. Sievers, but we that is something our board members, if they have a personal connection with a graduate, we, we let them kind of request. To be I have a granddaughter, so, so I for sure want to get Yeah, I was going to say. You, you were thinking just more for formality, to try to right. keep it as true to what the yeah. ceremony was. Maybe, maybe in your communication, you put it out there and give them the ability to exactly. to request. If they don't want somebody. Or, or request if they do. Request a board okay. You know, if they want to request a a specific board member or a board member at all. The thing, um, I mean, if I'm fine with that. If a, if a board member would like to be there, I have no issue with that. We can give you an approximate time of when that part of the alphabet would be there. You would just have to make yourself available to, to come in for that, that period of time. Yeah. Yeah. It was my yeah. last kindergarten class, so yeah. there are actually several. I mean, I would like yeah, to be there. I, I'll be there for the whole thing. Yeah, so if, I mean, as board members, I, I would leave that up to you to make that determination. If you want to be there, I'm fine with every student doing that. Uh, but again, I, I respect the question and concern. Yeah. And I think, I think Honestly, I would, I would hope all of it, if we know far enough in advance when you're going to do that, 
I would hope as many of us could be there as yeah, possible to, to show clap for our kids and sit in the front row and yeah. take a yeah. picture as they're getting I do have a question real quick. So is it totally mm -hmm. off the board being able to wait to, to July? Is it is that something we just can't do because of time frame or is things we, not gonna yeah. change? Are we gonna stay in a social distancing? Well we we actually we did talk about that about trying to do something and, and I you know I threw out like mid mid June but I think a couple things. One, we, we don't know exactly where we're going to be at as a state. Uh, the second thing is we don't know. I mean, kids' situations differ so yeah. much. And if, even if they do lift restrictions, families might be taken off and going somewhere. Oh, yeah. We just talked about this. We have this date on the calendar, and it's probably I, open yet. Yeah, I would agree. And I know that's one question that's blowing up the phones because I know there's other schools that are delaying it. but. My concern would go back to we get in the middle of mid-July and we haven't done anything, right? And because of the regulations or this, that, and now we've kind of lost our opportunity to do anything. And, and I, so I, to that. I did talk with the school today that was doing that. They're moving into July. But they're moving into July and they're saying if we don't have it here, it's canceled. We'll hand out diplomas and not have a ceremony. Right. So, and I go, and being a bigger school, knowing that it's been on the calendar, I just, I think that we... What's Des Moines doing? Has it, have they announced it? They were supposed to announce it today. I was just curious. They were, there was supposed to be a big announcement today. About what? Yeah, how they're doing their graduation. Because a lot of people had hoped to maybe we just have something outside and just do kind of a regular graduation ceremony and do it outside. Yeah, and we did talk about that. And I, uh, At the stadium? I know yeah. Polk County uh, Public Health um, one of the Des Moines area schools, not in Des Moines, wanted to do something like that, and they they were not in favor of that. They didn't they didn't feel that would be appropriate social distancing, or there was it was too risky. Well, and our stadium's out of commission. Well, I mean, our stadium's going to be out of torn up anyway. Yeah. But yeah. but yeah, the even if you try, if you say we're outside, we're keeping distance. Public health did not like that idea. One of the things I want to pick up on from a comment you made, it's, and you've talked to some parents and the students, and the word I heard you said is the, what, people are looking for closure. Let's close this. So doing it on that date makes kind of some sense to me. You know, I, I don't know, and I'm sure we'll hear since we're broadcast, but I would think the parents would prefer closure than in July or something like that, however you can do it. Do you know when you're going to do that? I mean, we're going to do the filming out there on the 24th, right? Uh, so we, that's, that's what we hope to show. No, that's when the show that's, we show. I know. Yeah. But when were you trying to think to put the whole so, your tr the like have us there? The next couple of weeks are going to be really busy. So May next, not this week, but next week on I think it's Wednesday and Thursday, we would set up to to get that photo piece done. The rest of it would be filmed. The individual parts would be filmed probably that following week, uh, early, and then we would have to have it ready by the week of the 18th. So would you be able to give us a, a date and a time? So yes. I mean, so, so we can be there. I mean. So the time I know the time. Oh, I got I got to remember now. I think it's we were going to do three time slots, and it's either Tuesday or Wednesday, Wednesday and Thursday. I'll, we'll all get an email okay. out, I'm sure. But it was it would be like a nine to eleven. A one to three and a five to seven, and then we would have a second day of, of what we couldn't get in. Okay, so basically all day Wednesday. This would be a question, maybe more for Greg. We're going to broadcast this with a link. Can uh, the grandparent from uh, Colorado dial into the link? It's not going to be a dial in, it'll be an actual. Or video, see it. It'll be a video recording that they will put but out on there. But when it's happening, it's a radio signal, correct? When it's happening, it's just a radio, si a radio, radio signal to project the sound. But the video itself would be self-encapsulated where I can watch it next year if I wanted to. I just click on the link and play it. So our plan would be to share it out with our families and let them share it out with any extended family. that, that okay, would But they couldn't do it as it was going on. Right. Okay, well. We would send it out that That's day. Sick. Say. Oh, so if, if you send it out that day and they're here at whatever time, one o'clock, 
doing it, they could actually click on the link and kind of like be live with it. I have a decision we can make if we would send that link out to everybody that at that time or if we would wait and delay the link until after it's been shown out. Yeah, because the other factor is still going to be travel restrictions. They're still out by this. And all of those people, their grandparents, everybody from out of town probably couldn't get here anyway. Right. So this is, to some extent, a plus versus what might yeah. have happened. We would want to get it out to as many people as we could just so that everybody could have that experience. I think knowing that we don't know where we're going to be as a state and what the regulations are going to be, and who knows if that would last all the way through August, we have no clue about that. And knowing that we want to get closure for our graduates, I feel like you have done an incredible job. I feel like that's it's a great plan, and you've done not only the best, but you've gone above and beyond that. And I, th I think that's I think it's a very memorable thing, honestly, to be able to. Who gets to say they had a drive-in theater presentation <laughs> and graduation, like with they two jumbotrons? What's that? They probably they don't, don't know what a drive-in theater is. They're going to know. They're going to find out. They're going to find out. They don't know what it is. Yeah. Excuse they're me. Gonna I'm gonna not so sure Jeff knows either control. from the look on his face. And they're going to try to figure out why they can't get it live on their phone and yeah. hear anything because they don't realize they actually have, have to, to use turn radio the radio on. on. I, one thing I would I would say, Jeff, is like I know there's some very passionate community members in our community that pour their hearts and souls into prom, into graduation, into homecoming. I would, it, whatever group is like project graduation or whatever, I would definitely reach out because they usually have ways that say, this is what we're working with. And they usually come and put on the finishing touches and make it awesome. And that was one thing I thought about too is once, I mean, if this is a go, my idea would be to contact them next. Yeah. And let them know this is the area we're working with. Yeah. What can we do to make this easier? Well, they always do yeah. that. I had an email today from yeah. one of the, the heads of that. Yeah, Jory Collins brought that up in our council meeting. She said, we definitely. Well, and they do a lock in, and, and then they usually, like, they have prizes where you draw names. I don't know if they could do some of that. And then they usually give them, like, a disc of all the seniors it flashes through I, and yeah. like fifty dollar gift card or something. But I think they're still hoping they're gonna do some party later well, on this yeah. Oh really? They, they oh. Some funds raised. oh yeah I know they raised quite a bit. They've raised quite a bit of money. So yeah. I, I I'm thinking they they're still wanting to do that so a, a party party. Yeah. Someday. Yeah. yeah. I think it's Maybe a good idea. In, I, in this world of uncertainty it gives you a certain date to look forward to. Yeah. I, I can attest as a parent it feels like groundhog's day sometimes. Right. Waking up every day, and this would give a definitive date and target for closure. I like it. The other thing you'll be hearing a lot about is the board uh, in the coming meetings, and, and Ken talked about closure. Uh, I would be a little bit nervous about trying to do something in, in July or August when we're looking at return to learn and what we have to do to get back to school for the new school year. There's going to be a lot of a lot of planning with that. Uh, so, so what about year round? Just devil's advocate, I just thought of that. If we go back and have school start should, in July. We should, we should have everybody go to year-round. That's actually what we should probably do. <laughs> I mean, I'm just thinking right now, year-round is still a go if it, it is. we fall in their guidelines and do uh, their protocol. It is. I mean, we're going to have to stay tuned. Uh, right. But we are planning as though as though kids will be there June 9th. Uh, July. Or, I'm sorry, yes, thank you. July 9th. Uh, and we have uh, something we're, we're working on now. The next iteration with, with the state and with our big planning document is the return to learn plan, which is due July 1st. And we're taking kind of a three-tiered approach, uh, you know, with tier one being, okay, if, if things are progressing well, the state's getting healthy, uh, how can we come back and just be mindful of this, be a little more, you know, be careful, keep it in the front of our mind, but have it be more or less normal. Uh, tier two, what do we do if, you know, if suddenly we have, uh, you know, more, more absences, increased absences, tier three would be, okay, what if we do have positive cases where we have to close down one or more buildings and then we're back in kind of a virtual ball game. So there's, there's a lot of planning that has to be done and, you know, it, it would be great if we knew exactly how everything's going to go. We don't. We have to live with a certain amount of uncertainty and try to try to plan for contingencies and, and just do the best we can do. And how many schools are year round? Uh, we just have two. Oh, in, in the state we have three, I believe. Three. Yeah. Yeah. That's wonderful. So that we'll go back. that makes it tough too. Test case. We'd be a great test case for the state, though. Uh, <laughs> but the way it works, unfortunately, because there are so few, that's not usually front of mind for the the state as they're figuring things out. So.
Well, I think you did a great job researching it and getting it going. And yeah. And gets, Thanks for your work. I'm yeah. sure it's uh, not what you had envisioned in your yeah, first year. Yeah, for your first year. Of, year in Indiana, I've tried to do well, I, can, I mean, we're fortunate, too, in this community to have um, Randy Stone, who is able to put this together as well on the, on the electronic side yeah. of things and that, that video production piece. So, I mean, I'm going to be working with him, and it's going to be pretty tight the next two weeks to really make it come together. So. And I would encourage you to really talk to some of those parents, because a lot of them are very creative and have some really great ideas. Yeah, so I think they'd really be a great help to you. Yeah. Even if they want to put stuff when you come in, like they could decorate the entrance and yeah, I mean they can really because really, 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 I think they're, they're, they're a heck of a lot more creative than yeah. <laughs> well, they, and uh, you have a lot of them so yeah. and they're <laughs> eager to help yeah. 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 So. Yeah. thank you Thanks, so Jay. much thank you. You. thank you thank you, yeah, you might. we've got yeah. a couple other things in between but maybe you just stick around for a few minutes uh, in case there's anything on the, the class size report which is sort of moot now since we're not in class but <laughs> this is the time you usually do it so. <laughs> Oh, I was looking for zeros, but... <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to Jonna for Summer Meals. Summer meals. So, so, well, right now, we're, we just got guidance today, so it's still kind of a moving target as to how this uh, feeding, the feeding um, grab-and-go lunches are going right now. They're right now, unless there's a change in the state that, from, the, from the leadership of the state, we are good till June 30th. After that, then it'll t it'll push to what we what we've done in the past with um, hot meals at two different locations in the summer program. Right now, the two programs that, that they're looking at are Emerson and Wilder. Um, it works um, with where our child care is at as well. That's it's a symbiotic relationship. So. Um, uh, so we're doing that we until June thirtieth. Well, unless they change, if, if if things open up more. That could change, and it could be uh, from a Monday to a Friday. We change it. So, are we just kind of stuck with the Wilder location because of the childcare there? Because that that right now they're getting the least amount of give. They're giving out the least amount of lunches right now, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah, and that's what I thought. Any, they're usually in the fifty to fifty to seventy range. Uh, a couple of days in Emerson, they they. Been high nineties or crack one hundred, but uh, Emerson really high. Well, it should because look at the location of it. I mean, you don't have ninety two to have to deal with and cross. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, Weinman uh, Insurance location has has definitely picked up from when we started it okay. to now. The South ninety two location, it's really pretty evenly spread. But your your statement about Lori Mills Wilder being the lowest is is accurate. I would say probably every day they've had the fewest. Mm -hmm. Well, and we and think we both will have roof projects, right. so those are out. So right. uh, Whittier could be an option in the future, but not Yeah, because I know we're looking to, because United Way helps with that, that traditional summer meals or whatever, and so we've had conversations too. Where else could we get south of 92, 65, 69, south of 92? Because it really is a, a need down there because we're actually going to be moving one of our mobile food pantries down to that area but it's only like every other month so we did look into or request a uh, dollar general parking lot which was not approved really uh, yeah see that's where the mobile's going okay yeah but we're, re we're we're having to go off of old census right that's probably why since this was 10 years ago yeah that's a good point yeah, yeah that's yeah so even more important to fill out the census yeah yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Cool. So that's where we are right now. Okay. Um, it could change tomorrow, but we did just receive guidance from June 30th unless something else changes. Okay. Yeah, that's good, though. All right. Moving on to G1A. Another thing, we, we typically do this type of year, uh, and you've seen this report before, uh, and, and John updates it every now and then uh, with the, the class size uh, report. And the right column there, as we've talked about in, in the past, if you see a negative, that's where we're over uh, our guideline in a grade level. And we try very hard not to do that anywhere. Uh, the one thing that you see different this time is uh, the added section of kindergarten is reflected um, under Laura Wilder. 
assumption is that's probably where that extra section will go because that's that's where there's physical space. The only other possibility I can see would be if, as enrollments come in, if we have uh, tremendous kindergarten enrollment uh, at Irving, for example, and there was a waiting list that seemed to justify putting it there instead. But uh, the the benefit with it at Lawrence Wilder too is, you know, that you you can assign from different different locations versus the elective program at, at Irving. But John puts this together. It's a helpful report. She can probably answer any questions there are too about it. But if we had if we had a, two teachers, would there be a room for another teacher? I mean, I'm looking at 24s and 25s to start the year. Yeah, on this piece, on this piece of paper, well, this, I know it doesn't right right now. This, this isn't the enrollment for next year. This is this is where we were at at oh, the this, end this of the year. Oh. So, so for example, uh, I just heard today, Irving Kindergarten right now, as of today, has 62 enrolled, which would be 21 in three sections. Which is, you know, which is still well, as big as it should be. Yeah. I, I'm not disagreeing a bit. So, but, but yeah, this is not next year, next fall numbers right now. This Do we have any projections are of next year's kindergarten class? I, it's hard. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I, I don't, we don't know. When do they enroll? Because I know Irving's open and, you know, enrolling yeah. now, but the you others are People are enrolling. Uh, I think we're right up to the day school starts. But we, right, I mean, I know that, but I just didn't know. But, but people are enrolling now, it's open. Yeah, yeah. it's open. And, and the way, if you look at the kindergarten and the first grade classes, they match, because I just, Without any data at all, I just assume that we're the same. And so kindergarten is, is kind of a long shot. We don't know. Um, our, our only indicator is our, our preschool is the largest it's been. Right, that's what I'm worried about. Yeah. The preschool is big. So then my question is this. So you hired someone at Wilder, but if the need is at Irving, can we put somebody to Irving is what I'm asking. Uh, yeah, we definitely could. I mean, we hire for elementary positions, and, and we can... You can move. Them. I mean, it's just assign, we could, assignment. We could volunteers, but we could assign as well. So we can move. Right. That's Absolutely. what I'm checking yeah. to make sure that we can. Uh, easier to move staff than it is to move kids. Sometimes, exactly. Although we try very well, hard. Well, I just thought that might be easier balance. than dealing with you know people who maybe want to stay in their neighborhood or whatever. Yeah. So. Do we think people yeah. because of all this might send some of their kids to if we go year round? Will year round plan because of this, or do you think? You know, our, are our, people chose to homeschool? I mean, I wonder what. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to know. It, I mean, it is I think such, we're going to look at some. But I will tell you, our, our year round numbers are as high as they've been since I've been here. I mean, it was our largest enrollment elementary school this year. Uh, I think we're was it what else? But at four fifty. Uh, you know, so enrollment has been very good. The last time we saw kind of a jump for any reason in kindergarten was uh, one of my first years here when we had the double calendar debate and we were you know really advocating fighting just to keep the year round calendar and that kind of sparked a lot of interest and we were right. four kindergarten sections that year in that building. Right. So hey, Art. Yeah. So uh, those numbers, the ideal students per section, I know you said that that's been the case since you were here as superintendent for quite some time. So, and, and if I it really has, kind of, sorry, oh, go ahead. I just want to say, ideal is a little bit of a misnomer. Okay. That's really a limit. That's okay. not I, ideal. That's yeah. the, the top limit. If, if that if that was the top limit back then, was the numbers, the current numbers at that time, even lower? Where we thought, oh man, if if we ever get to this. We definitely wanted that to be the limit, but we were way down here. But now we're pressing that limit. Is it time to bring the limit down? Do you yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. I think. Uh, and Setting I don't the know cap the at 23 instead of 25. I, I don't know the history of that number. Uh, oh, okay. This is, this is Carolyn. I'll yeah. send them with the history. Okay. There was years ago. Maybe Ken was even on it. We looked at other districts. We read a bunch. You know, we did some research and. Most districts are higher than what we say. We came up with our suggestion for a maximum students per section. And it was looking at data and feeling comfortable, knowing that we, obviously less is better, but we just kind of wanted to come up with something that we felt as a district, we didn't want to exceed very often. It was just our trigger point internally, but it was looking at data and if you look around and it's like a lot of people were higher than us uh -huh. in reality. So, I mean, I felt like it was a reasonable approach. 
It was something we decided we wanted. And obviously, less is better, but it wasn't something. It, it wasn't scientific. It wasn't like this is an absolute. It was just kind of a guiding thing that we felt comfortable with. Hey, Carolyn, do you know at that time then those numbers you said where where were the current numbers? Were they hitting those numbers, or were they way under those numbers? At Indianola, or yes, speaking? Indianola. Um, I kind of think there were some that were a little higher, and so we used it, we broke it up a little bit more, just on a few places. Okay. And I seem to think, I, I could be making this up, but I feel like it was closer to like 29 or 30, reality in a lot of districts. Okay. Not here. Not here. Not here. I mean, it's not ideal. I mean, yeah. Yeah. And that, it's been a while. Someone wanted to research it again. But we, want, we just did it as a guiding, like a, for us, something we would use as a guide that wouldn't be absolute, like if we hit 26, it's got to be another teacher. Mm -hmm. It was just like, where do we feel like things are comfortable, but realistic in the sense that we could, you know, because you're balancing it with budget, like where did we feel like there was a cutoff? Mm -hmm. So we could reevaluate it. Yeah, that's definitely the board's, the board's right to determine that, to, to direct that. Um, you know, we, we do work really hard to try to balance class sizes, um, and we, you know, we use our, our open enrollment students and our, our rural students, and, and now in our elementary is the way the buses run with, uh, with more pickup and drop off. It's actually easier even within town to gerrymander a little bit if you have to. Um, so, uh, it, it's a challenge every year, you know, and Denise uh, has been very good so far about it, talk with her about it. Uh, back to Ken's original question too, you know, is, is there fiscal space to add sections? There would be at Memorial's Wilder, there would be a classroom with a sign, uh, and there would be at Irving. Uh, those are the two buildings that were built uh, as four station buildings. There, there wouldn't be a spare classroom at either Emerson or Weaver. Our projection that we paid for last year, the RSM, RSP company, I can't remember what it is, shows K-5, you know, forecast for that. It doesn't break it down by grade on the sheets I have in front of me. And it's having us basically for the next two, three years staying the same in elementary. Enrollment goes up in other areas, you know, middle and high school, but staying relatively the same. Didn't work for us this year with a study, but let's think maybe it will next year. I think things are just going to be a lot different with this COVID stuff going on. How, think, how soon would you have to know what the numbers are in order to like, oh, we need a, we need another teacher? Like, we we did uh, we added a section of kindergarten in Orville's Wilder in September yeah. a couple of years ago. Yeah. Now that's not ideal, but we were we actually had a a person who had gone through sub different times. We knew was a very good teacher. We knew that would would like to get in there. That's not your typical hiring time frame. It's a little bit easier with um, with elementary teachers than with some of the specialized secondary things because there are larger numbers of applicants uh, typically. Um, you know, it's not ideal to be hiring obviously in, in July or August. Um, but, you know. So I'm curious, what did they do with the kids we hired some people that didn't finish student teaching. Did they just get a waiver, or how did that happen? Yes, the, the Board of Educational Examiners uh, took that up, and, and there actually were, were a number of things in code that where flexibility was given by the governor, too, and that, that was one of the areas. Like nursing students, they're not getting their... Uh, they're practicing. They're yeah, practicing, I just didn't know and they're, they're going right, in, they're going going sure right into the hospital. Do we, do we have... Um, something, maybe this is more of the curriculum, but do we have our instructional coaches or whoever would fall in that category as mentors to these new teachers coming oh, yeah, in? We, we have a very good uh, mentoring induction program. Uh, CCF has that up. Yeah. Okay. And, so. uh, and they will have an experienced mentor, plus we have that instructional coach. Uh, CCF has worked specifically with, uh, with new teachers. And next year, John, is it Denise Beely? There was some. Because we had a number of new teachers, we actually were bringing another instructional coach in to work with the teachers next year. See, they weren't here when she gave that, when Mrs. Evans gave oh, that, right. that little report. Yeah, so these guys, these guys probably have not heard no, that. No, I just want to make sure that they are being 
or in, I mean, brought on, yeah. on just like our kids when they come in the fall, we can't expect them to be sixth graders in sixth grade, right? Yeah. They're going to be sixth graders with two minus months <laughs> of fifth grade. Right. So just making sure that if they did miss out on some critical student teaching, right. that we're there to. There, there'll be a lot of support, them. and we, yeah. And, and so, I, I don't know that the staff side will show up in the return to learn plan like the student side will, but it's something we're thinking. So this isn't something we need to vote on or anything. So we could talk more about this at our like another strategic planning Absolutely. meeting here. Yeah, it's, just, it's just keeping it in front of the board. We want to. It's good to chew on. You know, I know it's been been a concern. I, right. I felt the pressure of trying to do. Yeah. You know, the best I can with it, and um, you know, I just want to make sure we're we're doing a little of the board on it and yeah. keep in front of it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um. Next is the high school second semester class sizes. Any questions on that? We have our principal still here. Any concerns you see with class sizes or? Uh, no, not with this year so much. I, I just think that we're we're going to be challenged going into next year getting things ready because of where we're aiming things this year. So it's, it's going to be hard to have definitive numbers. Going into next year, because we have to wait and see where we end up with the awarding of credits and, and, and how that pans out. Where the years past, having kids in school to finish things out, it was a lot more clear cut. Whereas now we're going to actually be pushing getting our master schedule out uh, probably a month later, uh, just because we have to wait for all these other things to fall into place. But the second semester will be very similar to what we saw the first semester, and yet it kind of falls in line with where our numbers were at. So there wouldn't have been any big surprises. Any other questions for Mr. Thanks. Thanks, for Thanks for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all your work. Make sure you know all the dates. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Oh, thank you. All right. So let's see. Moving I on. just feel like that. Board of Inquisition, the way we're set up here, I don't know if the audience can see it. I know. We've got this horseshoe with all of us here staring at one a single chair down there. I know. <laughs> Not even a chair for the attorney if he needs one. <laughs> and we just get to say what we want. I just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> he told me today when I picked up packets, he goes, where am I? I said, I said you'll probably be dead soon or something. <laughs> all right. We are on uh, three uh, G3A, your board packet. Uh, the memorandum of understanding. I can speak to that a little bit, uh, but you can. I think you can tell from the the actual agreement there what happened. And this, uh, you know, we had a, a great group of uh, teachers and administrators working on our combined salary schedule B and E this year. Uh, it's much cleaner than it used to be in terms of getting things organized and in one salary schedule. But uh, FCCLA was not included on that. So it didn't make it in the master contract. FCCLA is a uh, family consumer science club that I, I think the closest parallel to it is DECA, the, the business club. Um, there, are, there are competitions with it. There are meetings. It's, it's a great thing for kids to be involved with. Uh, we actually uh, here recently have, have uh, employed new family consumer science teachers at both the middle school and high school. And, uh, and they're both, you know, really, really getting after things. So this was an oversight. Uh, we didn't feel right that that was not included in the uh, in the schedule. Um, and it is, as I said, very, very similar to the other things that uh, end up on level five of that new combined salary schedule. So we had conversation, very good conversation with the leaders of the association, and uh, and came up with this agreement. And really, we have, it'd be, I would compare it to like the way both through bargaining, we tentatively agree on something. We, both sides have agreed on it, but we need to have the board approve it since it's oh, a okay. new added You've already position. So uh, everything's good to go forward um, to see the board, if, if the board gives their stamp of approval. Yeah. I'll make a motion to uh, approval to amend the master contract to reinstate the FCCLA stipend. Seconded. Motion made by Ben, seconded by Donna. Any further board discussion? Okay, hearing none. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 
Okay. <laughs> We're a little lazy, so it's the end. Excellent. Passes. Carolyn, you got to speed it up a little bit. <laughs> I was right there, but I do. You're kind of done. I don't know. You kind of won't hear me. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> All right. Moving on. Excellent. Uh, let's see. B. Yeah. Letter three. Where are we? G three B. Honestly, I can just give you a. Oh yeah, it's up there. I'm looking at my own notes. Sorry, never. Going. So we can. Uh, yeah, this Wednesday we're having a follow up meeting to things that we discussed this past Wednesday. So we'll be having that meeting on Wednesday morning, and Lori, Ken, and I'll be meeting. So it'll just be a continuation. So then I think we should be able to move forward with some things. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, it is something we need to kind of uh, make sure we know the direction we're going and as it reflected in the minutes, our conversation kind of centered around um, there seem to be kind of two discrete sets of duties within the current uh, assistant superintendent position, uh, a lot of HR functions and then some uh, student services type functions. And it is, it's fairly easy to differentiate those, those roles and uh, and that, that's kind of where our conversation has been about uh, whether do you just post and rehire because that's what the position's been, or is there a way, better way to serve students? Uh, I invite Ken or Lori or anybody else, or Rob, anybody who was in on that conversation. Well, I know I asked, I asked you for your um, job description, what I kind of did, and I talked a little bit about to you, is I took both of them side by side, and I just kind of went down through them and compared and took notes at what we talked about, like what you do and, and what Ron did. And I just, I made a notes on here of just my thoughts of what, what would it look like if we went to the HR and then I put ST, student, whatever it would be called. I don't know what it would be called. But I just kind of took notes and that's how I approached it, is looking Same at thing. both we'll jobs. Think just, about it. We'll talk about it Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, so that's how I kind of, you know, after we talked at Wednesday's meeting, what you had to say, I just kind of took that and went off, you know. And I don't know. So does the decision come back to the board after there's a recommendation from the Human Resources Committee? I'll tell you, the, the one issue with that would be really would be tough with timing unless we had a special meeting. If there was some kind of formal board approval, uh, I guess, uh, just because we have a, a May 18th meeting, a June 15th meeting, I would, ideally, I would get uh, positions posted Thursday, you know, with, uh, with another follow-up HR committee Wednesday. Uh, this, is, this is an area where, you know, even if I got it posted later this week and had it open for a couple of weeks, we're, we're still going to be behind the curve a little bit. Uh, in terms of human resources positions, there are several out there, and they can be difficult to fill. So, I mean, sooner rather than later would be great for the pool and the process. Can we have a special so, board meeting? Mm -hmm. and, and so, I, the question is the answer that we do not need to have board approval? Well, we, I, I mean, we don't have a board meeting every time we post a position. I, I mean, in fact, that's atypical. But I think, uh, I think this is a, a big enough decision if you're going a different direction that I want to have board conversation, but in terms of posting positions, you know, the board, of, we have personnel agenda, every board meeting, recommendations we make, and the board approves a hire. So, you know, we don't typically have a board meeting to approve a posting, but I want to make sure the board, you, you know. If you're going away from the superintendent, you're going to go two different jobs. I think all of us should have an opinion on it, not just us three. I would feel more comfortable as two and Don and Ben and Carol would have them. Because you're changing it. We're not a standard superintendent anymore. If you go away from I just have I mean, I don't know what you guys think. I just have a question about the other, I, I get the personnel, the HR person, so then the other job, the student services position, yeah. would that be a full-time position or would that be handled by? I think by it would be a full-time position. It wouldn't be a, an be administrative, an administrative position. position. We wouldn't pay that administrative. No. Uh, no, I mean, I think it, it would be a, a person who probably has some special education background. Okay, ideally. that's what I was wanted to be uh, clear on that one. Uh, the, okay. the title that uh, was suggested to me was uh, student services coordinator, you know, a, a coordinator. 
special ed tag, all of the right, ELL, five hundred fours, ELL, five hundred fours, the ELL, all of that. But not a not an administrative position. Just support. Okay. So would it be possible if human resources comes away with the decision of which direction? to send an email and ask for people's opinions, even though there's no official vote required, oh, just so we have a feel if everyone's on board with the direction they recommend? Yeah, I, I see that, no, no I mean, I'm, I'm trying to figure out what formally we have to do or not do, and if we've got freedom, maybe we just send an email out saying, this is what we're recommending, and can we do that, or is it well, because yeah, of the court that, that we can't just, do that? That would be just like sharing out the, the minutes from the meeting which, you know, we do every board meeting, but there's no reason that that can be disseminated earlier. Cost-wise, how much do you, more do you anticipate it being with two positions? Why could you? Yeah, I realize it wouldn't pay as much as the assistant, but there'd still be, two positions would still be more, it, I'm it guessing, would be, than the one. Would be. Ken, you can answer that. You were give, throwing out I, some numbers. I was throwing out numbers, but we that's why we wanted to meet again. We're not yeah. close on that. Not, this, not, not another hundred grand. Not another. If the student services a position, does that definitively have to be a brand new position, or is that something that current administrative positions could take parts of and cover? Yeah, well, that, that was one scenario I threw we out there. If we, if we were hiring this HR, then you know, I, I think I would, I would end up trying to pick up whatever I could of it. Uh, like, it, it, I'm not sure when Ron's official last day is. Is, is he still covering those duties June 30th. now, or somebody he else? Is, in the uh, he is. I mean, his contract goes through June 30th. He does have uh, vacation accrued to use too. So, I mean, he won't. That's what I just wonder. You know, it's it's going to be more of a cost to hire the two versus the one. Is is there, is there, is there a way where you could just do an HR manager and then? Not saying one person has to do all the other functions, but is there a way to divvy out all the other functions? We, we had a we had a discussion on that. That's one of the reasons why we want to talk some more. Okay. We have pretty well overloaded all our other administrators with extra functions in the last two years, and this one gets kind of sophisticated with the knowledge of all the special ed laws and the others. So all that will probably still be talked about on Wednesday, you know, and shared because it is a valid idea. It's kind of kind of drawn away from that. They've really all got tons of stuff they're doing already. Um, because a lot of things that we've done in the last year or two have been split up among the principals, I believe. And yeah, I have, just don't want to keep adding. Yeah. We, we do have principals in charge of different programs, like Mark Timberman had something with language learners. Uh, this is not at uh, one of those wilder does the title. Uh, Chris Gales, the middle school, ends up the counseling program. That, uh, Ed Johnson does early childhood summer school. That, that system was actually in place um, for, for a number of years, but there are certain, but there are things that have gotten more complicated and, and more regulated uh, in recent years. It doesn't seem to get less complicated as we go along. Uh, I would be, to answer your question, I guess, but I, I would be hesitant to try to put those functions. I, I would not ask any principal to try to be a special ed director. I would I would do it. I mean I I have a decent understanding of special ed law and I think I kind of explained this to the board in, in one of the updates. Uh, I, I'll do whatever needs to be done. It's just what Mr. Lorenz runs into now. If he's in the middle of an investigation or, or some kind of challenge or something, okay that becomes front burner. That's what gets my attention. Okay, so now I'm not out in buildings. Uh, or I'm not leading instructional routes, or you know whatever the things would be, but you know the work the work would get done one way or another. It's just it would probably get done better with somebody with some specialized knowledge and a focus than adding it to someone else. So that that's kind of what we wrestled with in committee. I'm sure we'll talk more about. I think Carolyn's right. We'll get it. See where we're at. Get it to the board. See if anybody wants to talk or. You know what I think Carolyn's getting at, and we don't send it out and say, Do you all agree? You know, we can send it out and say, This is where we're at as a committee. We don't need to and do need anything. Does anybody want to talk? We need to have a conversation. We, you know, we yeah, can we'll call do, call. Meeting. We need to do it. Yeah, no question. But I think everyone should realize that, you know, at least look for it so that you can have a quick turnaround. 
you know, yeah. and check emails after Wednesday and maybe kind of have a deadline that if you have comments, you want it by a certain date so that people don't wait a week to look at emails or something. <laughs> Why are you looking at would me like that? <laughs> well, no, I'm not looking at you, Laura. I'm just thinking, Carolyn, would that be you by any chance that we're talking about here? I, say, I don't look at mine very often. Well, I would say, just, just for people to be aware that they We'll follow it up with a text. We'll follow it with a text. But I, I get our point that you do want to get this higher. I mean, get Would that be by Wednesday noon? An email could be done? I mean, do you want to use it? Yeah, I mean, I have a better understanding of what people do. We can't go. Are you going somewhere? Let's announce it. I'm stuck in my head. I want to ask. Is there a meal set? Sure is. Okay, so stay tuned on that one. Okay. Yeah, look for, the, maybe, look for the email then. When maybe, like maybe to Carolyn's like point, as we go through all these hires, maybe would it be too much for HR to send out a little email after your meetings on Wednesdays? No. Just, just hey, these are the bullet points we discussed today. Let's Any committee know. can do that, probably should. Yeah, just. Yeah, I think all committees Yeah, there's no that. reason you have to wait to see what it's meeting. Yeah. Just send We're them doing out. it at 7 Wednesday, right? Yes. Yeah, We're doing live, right? Okay. <laughs> Not dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This next section, you have to make sure we don't miss anything, Kevin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we try. Our hardest. Legally, 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 we can. Do we want to blow a horn or anything? All, All right. right. So we ready to? Yeah. So we will move on to uh, G five. Okay. That's all right up there. <laughs> I found that out tonight. <laughs> John, do you, do you want to speak to anything on it? No, this just finishes up. So if you read your agenda, your agenda tells you exactly what you need because it looks like that is it has the older stuff in there. I didn't see this before. So. Well, we've done we've done the that we've already considered the bids. We've had those and and we did that the day of the last mm -hmm. meeting and accepted those. Yeah. So we're good on A and and. Uh, well, those are that is last period's one. So I don't know. So which ones do we have to vote so on then? The, you, the first one is resolution appointing the payment agent, the paying agent, bond registrar, and transfer agent. And that those four mm -hmm. points are on the next page too. If we scroll down one more yeah, page, that's I don't know why it's there. We go. Right there. Yeah. Okay, so these are ones we have to yeah. prove tonight. One, two, three, and four. Right. Okay. Here we go. Rapid fire. Okay. If nobody has objections, like last time, I'm glad to move the different ones. I move uh, the resolution appointing paying agent, bond registrar, and transfer agent. Approving the paying agent, bond registrar, and transfer agent agreement and authorizing the execution of same. Motion made by I, Ken. I second. Seconded by Lori. Any board discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I move Carolyn, what happened? <laughs> I, I move approval of form of tax exemption certificate. Motion made by Ken. I'll second that. Seconded by Carolyn. Well, uh, any further board discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries 7 0. I will move the approval of continuing disclosure certificate. Motion made by Ken. Second. Seconded by Donna. Any further board discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 7 0. I move the resolution amending the resolution authorizing the issuance of approximately $9,460,000 general obligation school refinancing bonds and levying a tax for the payment thereof. Which made by Ken? Second. Seconded by Lori. All those in favor, or any further board discussion? <laughs> any, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries seven zero. All right. <laughs> that was wonderful time. That was timely, wasn't it? <laughs> All right. Letter uh, B. Monthly financial reports. For February, our trash are in there. Um, as you look, you know our financial position is the last couple of years. I'm good at all the same. As you look at the graph, the graph is a good way to. Uh, if you look at that. Um, we're, we're in three years. We're the same. We're kind of in the same trajectory within very, very little amount of money. So, red. That's our cash situation, uh, which is kind of what the balance sheet shows. Um, it, it, it 
general fund, the one piece is dividend, obviously, is our, our self insurance fund, which right now we're at February at over half a million dollars in it as a savings. So, so that's where we are. If we would have just paid all our premiums to the insurance company, that half a million dollars would, would be to the insurance company. So that's what we're saving, which is a good thing, you know. Um, this this um, pandemic may, may be interesting on how this all plays out. When will we know that? I mean, when will you actually, we actually see? It, it's, 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 it's actually, it's pretty much, we, they turn around the, um, the expenses, like the claims that they process, pretty quickly. I mean, we, we pay them weekly on a, on a processing piece for, to both our dental and our health. So this is, the half a million dollars just includes dental and health, and I don't have with, with me the, breakdown of which is which, but uh, dental is obviously much less. But, um, but in tracking and in dealing with our, um, our brokers, this is very good for the first year. So, so in our general fund, are we look, I mean, when we get the books all done, are we gonna, are we gonna see a big, it, that's, is it, is it just gonna be really weird in October, November when we get numbers from? I, you know, it's just gonna be strange, I, I mean, I don't know, I have on the May 18th, and it's not on the agenda, I just processed it today, the uh, amendment that we'll do, because originally just was going to do just for the bonds that we've been funded, both, we did three different issues, two general obligation and one sales tax, so it's like 24 million increase. And obviously it's an in and out, it doesn't change our status of our budget or any taxes. But I did increase, just as a buffer, all the other categories a little bit because I don't know. I don't know what I don't know. I think we'll have some savings, but I don't know. So um, it doesn't increase our taxes, but we'll, we'll look at that at the uh, May 18th meeting. But again, it's just going to be weird. weird. This has never been in the, this has never been in the works. So. But you think we feel, you feel pretty comfortable where we're sitting? Where we are right now, I think we're, we're you know, we're, the last few years we've been, uh, you know, you know, either at our budget guarantee or at less than the budget guarantee, and we've held our own. So now this next year, that'll be the telling point to see where, where we go from there. As we look at things, it sure looks like we'll be okay. Um, depends on how we get backfilled for things with this COVID expense. Do we, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say, so the, um, on the graph there from March to April, that's usually when property taxes come in, and that's why the yeah, graph so is. So you up. see the dip. So but we we may not see that go as high. That's what I'm wondering. Okay. I, I, well, I, how, how far off are we right now? Is the county well, saying? Well, just you know, from the April receipts that we received, it, we were reduced from what we received in October by about seven hundred thousand. Okay. But that was a uh, the governor did uh, allow for Her. people not to pay right then. So. Till Ju July, 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 isn't it? July 31st. So that, that is it's going to be because then we'll have the July legal ones coming in in July okay. because that's a new fiscal year. Okay. So it will it will be interesting to see how it all plays out. Okay. Okay. But we're watching it. Okay. Another question. Oh, Karen. Oh. Yeah, I was just going to add real quick, like with the medical claims, because I'm on a committee at work. I mean, there's definitely going to be a lie with the elected elect or elective procedures and things like that. So I think. You may end up in the same spot. Your timing may just be a little different as far as the, you know, self-insured part. Yeah. 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 yeah, and then, like, obviously the timing with the taxes will be strange, but you should kind of end up in the same spot, hopefully. That's with the property taxes, I don't know. Yeah. My other question, I know you don't know now, but, like, could we find out in August, I guess maybe we know, what our savings was from... The new hires and and the yeah. retired. Well, we, I, I mean, I, I know we don't because we're still we're still hiring and we're figuring all that out. But yeah. will we have kind of a rough number in August? What we've saved or what Probably, we hopefully before then. Um, but yeah, I would hope to have. I, Ron has that and he's given he needs to give that to me and I will process. He figures it with salary only and I put in true cost of what everybody costs. So I get the. Has everybody been hired? It just is everything now filled, or do we have any more teachers leaving? If we had anything, well, we have a uh, high school band instructor right now. Uh, 
We have the preschool teacher. Okay, preschool teacher. Is that Miss Kendall? Yeah, so I, she was on Zoom today. Uh, food service is approved tonight. Mm -hmm. We have, you know, whatever we do with departure of Mr. Lawrence. But we're, we're getting done, we're getting close. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I will share that. I was just that. curious. I mean, I don't, I mean, I figured we probably wouldn't know till August, but mm -hmm. I was just curious if we would get that number, what we. Thank you. All righty. Uh, letter C, facilities projects. Okay. Oh, yeah, we got to approve the financials. Okay. I make a motion to approve the financials for um, February. February. Motion made by Lori. I'll second that. Seconded by Ben. Any for further board approval? Or any further board discussion? <laughs> no. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carries 7-0. Now facilities project update. But you can kind of see what we have there. I know that one of the things that we wanted to talk about at, with no action, but just discussion of the different projects that we have going um, that haven't, we're, we're not serious. We haven't bid out, we haven't, um, we're still meeting, we're still in the phases of the meeting of the security cameras. Um, those projects can still be done with balances we have on hand at, um, through our sales tax if we wanted to do that. So, in essence, what you're saying is everything that's been on the sheets under our safe expenses and under our PEPL budget, all the money is in the bank that we can do those projects with. Didn't we already approve the cameras? We haven't no. done anything. Uh, no. We haven't done the public hearing or the... Um, for either of those two projects. Oh. Those, those are still in the works. It kind of, everything kind of stopped when all this happened, but we're trying to get it up and going again and getting the project people in the right places. Those, because of the point they're at in the process, if, they're, if the board was going to be very cautious and hit the pause button, those would be the things we haven't bid yet, we haven't had board approval of yet. You know, uh, we could we could go slowly with those if, if there was, you know, concerned about safe rigging or something. Well, the rigging's but a safety issue, isn't it? The, the rigging I would like to go forward with. The cameras would be... Would be nice. Would, would be the yeah. one that we could... Well, involved, safety but. issues. Well, I'm thinking the rigging's like a major safety issue. I want the cameras too, but I'm thinking we really can't pause on them. Okay, but if I'm understanding right, we have the money in the bank yeah. to do all of these. Mm -hmm. Yep. We can do it. So, we don't need to save it. I mean, we can spend it on this. And I'm good with that. as I follow forward with the sales tax things, and everybody knows there'll be some reduction out of that showing up in it next year, uh, whether it's going to be 10% more, you know, I don't know if anybody knows. But we're not committed uh, to that much the following year that we have to have an even higher balance in the bank. Yeah. Okay, so from what I've seen, Carolyn, I'm very comfortable that the money's in the bank to do that, I don't know what else this money would be used for if we saved it, you know. Carolyn, I think the only thing, were you thinking if the governor were, or somebody would make some type of an allotment where you'd be able to shift funds from one to another, that's the only thing you were thinking? That's what I was thinking, just because it's kind of unprecedented. Like, would they, would they ease up the way money is, you know, allocated and bucketed out? That was my concern. I know we have the money. I know that it's been, you know, tagged for that. It's coming out of a fund that you can't use for things like salary. But I just wondered, you know, what's the chance? I mean, we don't know. What's the chance that it, if things, you know, if taxes are, that are coming in are so low and they adjust what our funding is going to be and they may need to help us out with some of the constraints that we have, I just thought, well, maybe it makes sense to wait on some of this until we know that, if we knew when that kind of information could come out. I'm not hearing anything like that. I'm just saying, what can we do to give ourselves as many options as possible? Okay, and my response to that will be, I don't know how many you know, options we need. We've got the unusual thing coming up in our next general fund year budget of the extra 700000 Yes, yeah. Uh, undesignated, okay, at, the, at this point, so that's there. If the state is cutting us 10% or whatever it does, which it would do for all school districts, our solvency ratio is right around 
That's about seven million, and that carries us for a while. The other thing, Carolyn, I think that protects us on that, as I took a look around, is our solvency ratio, it's percent, you know, budget, is right around 20 percent. There are big districts that their percentage is about 9 percent or, or 10 percent. There's some big districts in good shape. Small districts, the same thing. If they get anything past 10 percent, you know, something, the state is really going to have to do something. The other districts won't have the opportunity but to go bankrupt or anything. That's my impression. I, guess I just wanted to have the conversation and have it be an informed decision that we are comfortable continuing with what we have. So I'm not, I'm not fighting it. I'm just saying it's a conversation to have. So, so can that money that is set aside for the rigging and the, um, the cameras, so that's Pebble, right? Pebble so, the same, which have the same uses. But you, that money we couldn't use anywhere. You can't take that for salaries, and you can't take yeah. it. I no, mean, no, that not, governor not would this time, and that, that's what that. Carolyn is saying. Maybe yeah. but, because this is such an exceptional situation, maybe the legislature would. Oh, so the governor would have to say something. Well, the, the oh, legislature. Okay. Uh, I, I really, I don't think that's likely. Uh, and I'm thinking back to when the getting getting the save tax as a statewide sales tax was a long process. I mean, it was done by a county, it evolved over years, and uh, I don't think the legislature would be very excited about opening up that to different purposes. Um, and even, even the, the prospects of across the board cut impacting education, I keep hearing from people who work with the legislators that, that they think even if there are cuts, that education would be held harmless. Uh, so, well, I think the good news at the state level, much like our district, they were in really good shape going into this year. So if there was any year to have this happen, they had the reserve to soften the blow as well. So yeah. I think come out of it the best you can. And we have been, we've been meeting, there's been meetings either with the DE Tuesday and Thursdays. We, we've been, they've talked a lot, and they've never, that's not been in, on the docket at all. That we've been meetings like that. So, I would hope that they would give us a little, if they had any idea that they're going to do this, that they let us know so that we could be planful. Because I think they can't just say it and then it happened. You know, like there had to be some. You would think they'd drop you some hints. <laughs> yeah. Hey. I think we need to fix the rigging. And the rigging of the cameras only until we have them already approved, right? right. right. What is the camera cost exactly? Do we know? We don't know. We haven't saw that board yet. We won't know until the rest of it out. Yeah. I just was curious. I remember what the first the one first was, was like. The first was like $85,000. Yeah, so it was around right. 85 but I don't remember. And then the two something at the middle school, right? Mm -hmm. The total was over two, then, wasn't it? Yeah, the total for the two was over $80,000. But it was also a discount to do them both together. Yeah, yeah and you had, you had a right around 200000 for all of it, everything. Okay. Anything else, Carolyn? No, like I said, I just wanted to have a conversation about it, mm -hmm. so I'm good. Okay. So are we going to, so then we have to call for a public hearing and all that? Is that the next meeting then? Depends on when they, they have to get through their processing, so um, we need to do that sooner rather than later because it has so to they, be within, yeah. you have to have it within 10 days of the, of the next meeting so you can do your public item. So we got money in the bank for both rigging for and these. for cameras right now? We do, now. yeah. Ready to go, okay. The money from the rigging was supposed to be auditorium chairs originally? Well, or? no, we, uh, okay. the auditorium chairs are still budgeted for the following year. Okay. And that's that's been in the budget. Really, the money from the rigging is taken from what we were trying to bank for an eventual auxiliary services okay. building. That's right. That's right. You know, that, that's kind of our next big project in terms of a building. And, and you know, we're, we're addressing these as they come up, and it's, it's okay. kind of like, Anything else? Or if, if you're saving for this, but you really have to take part of that for a uh, pressing need, well, you just have a little less save for that. You know, maybe it takes a little longer to get that done. So, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're not. Uh, we we didn't bump any any project that's already on the books or in the budget. We okay. didn't we didn't bump the rigging. All right. Okay, we are at the second reading of the board policies. Uh, I just got one question. Yeah, to grab on the on the stadium parades. You've written down the final shop drawings are complete. Is that just 
What are you referring to? Is that just the design of the so turf once, and drag? Yeah, once the contract is done, then, then it goes back to the, um, to the company that's doing it for the final shot to make sure you got colors. Well, for this, color's right, um, the, the right product in place. And so once they have that, that's what they work off of as they, as they do the project. Mm -hmm. Once it's done, they call it an as-built. They then once it's done, they do another drawings, and, they, and then we have those and we keep those as the reality, the, what really happened. You know, so if there was any changes throughout. But nothing has changed since the last board no. meeting. Okay. Right. So do we have to approve these in the? Yeah. Just no. a second reading of the board policies. Well. Yeah. And I, I've heard of no uh, concerns or changes since the first reading here. This is six hundred. 605. Make a motion to approve the uh, second reading of board policy 605.1 through 605.7 R1. Motion made by Ben. Second. Seconded by Sue. Any further board discussion on these items? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Okay. Okay, we're going on to our board calendar. Are we so, wanting to nail down a planning meeting now? I'm, Anybody? I'm open to that. Let's see why not. Yeah. Proceed with the uh, good news of opening the state back up. <laughs> District back up. It's Warren <laughs> County. Yeah. Yeah, Warren County. You know, we have just the, because of uh, where the holiday fell, uh, we have just one May regular board meeting scheduled the 18th, so we could easily go. The Monday before? Monday. Yeah. The day of that Monday. That May, second Monday, Monday in May. The 11th. The 11th. The 11th. You hear this, Carolyn, May 11th for uh, a planning workshop? Yeah, I'd have to check and stuff, but... 5.30? Sure. We got 5.30? Like a 5.30 on May 11th, Carolyn, is what we'd be looking at. Monday. Uh, I, I would think that would work just because there's... Yeah, that should work. Just like last time, Art, where we'd just be in here. That's fine. That's to bring your own food there because there's no lunch. Yeah, there's no lunch. I, like I well, don't. Like, you know I, I haven't thought about that. It, food service could do it. Uh, they were going to do it before. Something else too, and I, it's at the top of the next uh, board agenda for the 18th. And the new members wouldn't know this, but typically in May, because it's yeah, board appreciation yeah. month, I usually ask you, what do you want me to grill for you? And I grill for you, and other cabinet members bring side dishes and stuff. So. We could we can do that on your workshop day. We can do that on your uh, board meeting day. Done deal. <laughs> Look at Ben. <laughs> so much for thinking we could vote on that, huh? We've been told. Ben's all over it. So I'm envisioning a big T-bone steak. That's, that's why I've had steak. Somebody had before. a steak last I, year. I can't remember who it was. It was Ron. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but I turned down no, no reasonable request. There was a hot dog. There was oh. fish. <laughs> uh, so we can we can okay. no, I mean, You want to just go the sack lunch route next board meeting? I, I can. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. Okay, then you get to eat twice. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, okay. <laughs> So what are we doing? So you do need to let me know. I, on the 11th, you can on the 11th. you want on the 18th. The 11th, you'll get a sack lunch, and I'll ask you on the 11th. So you have time to think. Okay. <laughs> Did you hear that, Carolyn? <laughs> I won't bring my own that time. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I brought yeah. Oh. In okay. May 18th, we'll have our picnic. Yeah. So Monday, May 11th, 530, uh, planning meeting, sack okay. lunch, and then the following Monday, board meeting. Are we usually five? have done that? We've tried to come in and yeah, and, and eat at five and then meet at five thirty. Roll horse riding that day. Okay. Hey, is Ray there? Can, can I ask if we're having technology tomorrow? No, it's, that was the next topic we were going to ask about. That was the first okay. Topic. I didn't know if you guys wanted to meet in person tomorrow or meet. I was just skipped the last time. I didn't know where we were at. Maybe we can still raise. 
back on track with the work. Where's tomorrow? Oh, I can't tomorrow. I don't have a helper tomorrow. I don't know. Uh, Carol, it's not going to work for Lori. I could right. Zoom. I mean, I could Zoom. I just don't. I have. I don't have a helper tomorrow. I didn't know we were Zooming these, so I would have had her there. I don't have any requirement for approval tomorrow. Just be update on projects. The cameras. We already talked about. You hear that, right? Carolyn? Ray said he yeah, doesn't. It's updates rather than things that need. I, I do have one question. So are they the kids turning in their computers in June, or are we oh, yeah. just they'll keep them till May or till August, right? So. Is that, or are we, are we the playing seniors will definitely be turning in. <laughs> yeah, we, we have talked about that. Uh, when they when they come for their picture <laughs> and their diploma. Hey, we'll need to figure out the time we need that because I know some of them still have work. Yeah. You know, on but you will we'll, gather we'll, the other ones. But the other ones. I guess that was my only technology about, question, Carolyn. We're looking at letting them keep them. I have it or not have, I guess. Oh, it's public, but we haven't talked about that. We haven't talked about that. That's what I've been looking at, but I, again, I haven't put that out publicly yet, but we're looking at letting those that have. That was my only technology question, but if you want to meet on Zoom, Carolyn, I'm, I don't care. I just won't be able to get here. That would be something that we'll talk about. <laughs> Already did, so. Yeah. So it sounds like. I mean, we, either way. If we're going to get back Ray, on board, Ray's I'll cool make either way, Carolyn. I'll, I'll let him decide. Because he knows what, if he thinks things can uh, wait, Slide. I'm fine with that. I'd let him decide. We have another one, May 26. Okay. I mean, I can plan just to have my help for that day. Plan for that. Okay, May we'll 26. plan for May 26. Okay. okay. Thank you. We are, we are going to meet Wednesday morning uh, for HR. I sent an email out to policy. There were, there were so few this next time, um, like five or six policies, something like that. Is Same email as okay? Yeah, that yep. works. So we won't we won't get together on that one May fifth. Uh, but then, do we want to want to assume going forward? Then once we get past that, that we're we just kind of reinstating yeah. our committees. Okay. So we'll meet the fourteenth then, right? For curriculum. Mm -hmm. okay. You're saying after the start of May, just go yeah. full board again. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So once May begins, Carolyn, starting all the committees up again. So we will have the facilities in the Thank center. Okay. Cool. Sorry, Ray, is it time on meeting? The, uh, the agenda for May 18th, this was just rolled over from uh, previous years. We typically do have handbooks, different contracts. Uh, this has been a, a different year with getting together to meet and defer, but John met with directors today, and, and she'll we're, we're figure out how to work through yeah. things with our meet and defer employees. So. You know, we'd be hoping that in uh, May you would have a bunch of bunch of contracts. You know, you you've done the teacher contract already, coaching contracts. Uh, are not they're not done because we have to take our Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I I meant uh, sponsors and coaches, not instructional coaches. But, uh, oh, some of them are still coming. Okay, I stand corrected. Okay, and then uh, bring it up. so yeah, hopefully we'll have a uh, we'll have a lot. Of for your next meeting. Handbooks, uh, we did get a request from the nurses to kind of uh, put, put a delay on the health handbook, which I think makes sense as things evolve with COVID-19, so that'll come a little yeah. later. Yeah. So, anyway. I'm sure that's going to be changing. I think that's it. I just got a quick question. How's, uh, what feed, type of feedback are you getting from the teachers on the online learning? Are they finding a lot of their students are engaged? Yeah. Um, I, I have a, I did ask for updates. Uh, I think it, it's incredibly variable. But just as an example, I got some solid numbers from Irving and Orioles Wilder today. Uh, Irving was 76% participation, Orioles Wilder was 61. I asked uh, about the high school. I think there's really a wide range. I mean, 10% to 50%. That's what he, he depending, told me today and I talked to him. It, it, it really varies depending on, on the teacher. Now, of course, the high school the kids are in concurrent enrollment classes. Those are going on. Uh, you know, the college credit ones and, and AP for the most part, I think. Uh, middle school, I, one of the earliest reports I got was from uh, one of the English teachers. And she had uh, 45 of her 70 students had done everything. And this was before we actually officially approved the, the plan, the 13th. And she 
she was reaching out to the 25 others. So I think that's, that's part of the plan is to try to connect to those kids who aren't voluntarily logging on there. But it, it does vary quite a bit right now as to who's participating. Okay, and then I assume as part of the plan as uh, we, we talked at the beginning of the meeting, plans we need to get to the state as far as, you know, we have a shutdown next fall. I mean, I assume plans are in the works for if we do have to do this again, a more robust online learning right. process. So as the return to learn template hasn't been released yet, but the general pieces of that would include um, how you're addressing the academic gaps from this current year, um, the social emotional needs of the kids and the staff, um, those would be big components of that. And then that'll also be broken down into specific needs for EL students at risk all of those different pieces. So um, we're kind of talking at the admin team of um, the possibility of breaking, once we see the template, breaking it down into some focus groups as part of a larger task force. And because we have this time to plan, we get the opportunity to include parents, the PTO presidents, people as a part of those sub components. Mm -hmm. um, a large one is goes back to wellness. So I talked with Christy about not forming an entirely new group that the committee she's been working with this year is a focus group and maybe take on those roles too. Um, so that plan might be somewhat in general as far as, um, okay, what are the team building activities that would occur um, next year and have those in place, but then each building can be a little specific as to what that looks like. Um, for example, out at Oregon as well, where since they're involved with the PBIS program, theirs might be structured a little bit different, but we would ensure that, for example, everybody has some team and connection activities going on. Um, in terms of training, Right now, um, we have in place a virtual training to help the whole middle school staff finish course one of their blend flip training that they've been doing this year. So they'll be able to complete that. And then just today, I confirmed that um, for the high school, Jeff Sebersman will be able to select 20 teachers to get them through course one here at the end of this year in June. Um, so we're trying to build that capacity knowing that if this does come back around, we're most likely going to be required. We want to be prepared for that. Um, I briefly spoke with Ron today about special education and what can we be doing with the special ed teachers in terms of um, creating language, you know, through meetings with families that could be prepared and ready to go. Um, he said again, there really has not been distinct guidance from the state in the area of special education, but thinking that might keep coming along um, so we can be prepared for that possibility to also with our EL students and they're at risk. So um, those pieces um, are in place and we've shifted the code.org training that we were supposed to have for all the, the elementary teachers who haven't had that. That's been shifted um, and recontracted for August. Um, so again, just kind of shifting things as we go, so, but trying to build that online instructional capacity through the trainings. So what, we, what, I, what I want to know is next year when we start, whatever the first day is, if for some reason we have to start online, would we be able to do that? And number two is if we hopefully have a normal year, I hope nothing happens, but they keep talking about a second wave next winter, mm -hmm. would we be able to transfer them back, this is the goal, I mean, I know you're not there, to be able to switch over the weekend back to online? And we don't have to go through this month's wait again? You see what I mean? Yeah. We yeah, know it could happen, you know, should probably be part of our planning now. Yeah, oh, definitely. And then okay. that that would be a, a key part of the return to learn will be what ifs like that. How, how can we make, and actually one of the classes that we were trying to prepare teachers with this year uh, was called the Rapid Transition Online Learning course uh, module. So, I mean, that, that would be the goal that we could do that as seamlessly as possible, as quickly as possible. The problem with that is when you take a look at integrating technology into the classroom, you don't want it to be just at a substitution level where, if, for example, instead of having a hard textbook, we're just reading the textbook online. No, I instead don't. of having the paper worksheet, now it's online. So we want to increase their skills and essentially develop some minimum competencies to say, here are the skills with online teaching that we want everybody to have. So when that time comes, or even with, if it doesn't, um, that is called blended learning, where you have a little bit outside of the classroom, some in the classroom, and we want to keep that going so again, students too know how to interact online. Some are very shy about being in a, Zoom, a live Zoom meeting. Um, I had talked with Cindy Bauer, who had been speaking with some kids too, that they don't like how their voice sounds. 
um, if you're in a live Zoom meeting, I could be with students that I've never had class with before, and then they don't want to speak up, or they prefer it to be recorded so they can go back to it. Uh, so we're trying to figure out, too, it really comes back to a lot about relationships and how, you, how, are you, how hard are you going to work for that teacher who's in the screen? <laughs> well, and I think <laughs> some of it class, from yeah. a mom of a child who is very hands-on paper. Like, I could hand her a stack of stuff, and she should sit and do her work, and it won't bother her. Mm -hmm. But the computer and her reading on the computer screen, she just, she is a, a like a hands-on, having to touch something learner. And we've really struggled. Um, and so just keeping that in mind, too, everyone's learning style is so different. So when I started printing off, I've had much more compliance with her getting stuff done because she just, and I'm the same way. Like, I print out... It would drive me, it drives, like I write down anything that I see from this because I, I just, I can't make corrections on a screen. That's just not how my brain's wired. So I think that's been some feedback I've gotten too from parents is appreciating that there is an option to print out packets too for those that just don't learn on a computer that way. And then with those, with those teachers doing that training that you were talking about earlier, would they then be ready or would we be able to as a district then in the future January, February for snow days to be able to do anything like a. The state of Iowa currently hasn't approved that we could substitute those in. Okay. Um, the governor might be more motivated. I don't know <laughs> to do that now since we are increasing our, our capabilities, but that would have to be a decision at the state level whether to allow that. Oh, okay. Okay. Have, have we had any discussion or if, yes. do you know what schools or anyone's doing it? She waived the start date for school in the in August, but are, are we looking at anything like that, or is it just going to be too hard to figure it all out? We, we've talked about it, and, uh, you know, the, the benefit would be, uh, I see a couple of potential benefits if you want to start earlier. We have to we have to approve the new calendar and everything fine. Uh, you know, you would uh, get kids back with a little shorter, obviously. In Instead of five months, it would be four, maybe, yeah. yeah. And then uh, the other potential benefit would be if there were a spike or recurrence or something of the virus and you, you had more days in and suddenly you were out in November, December, whatever, you know, maybe you'd have a little more flexibility. Um, I think it is kind of back to our graduation conversation. It's sort of tough to plan, not, not knowing how things are going to go exactly. Um, the, the majority of schools, as we were talking about this, uh, as a Heartland 88 superintendent's group a week or so ago, the majority were not planning to try to change uh, the end of one school year or the start of another one. They were. I was just curious. So, yeah. was that, um, go ahead. If we started earlier to make next year longer, you know, we've got to yes. pay yeah. a lot for that. Oh, well, absolutely. If you're adding yeah, contract happened? days, there's, there's yeah. no, another That's issue. what we're talking about, is an adding contract. Well, you could, you could I, I was talking about just taking in shifting the school year earlier and not adding oh, days. Oh, oh, longer but, summer next oh year. okay. But that I was thinking another, of it, yeah. But that's another thing some schools are talking about is, well, can we trade days between contract years? Can we, uh, would this, would this okay. money from government, well, the, the CARES Act dollars would pay for about a day and a half is all. <laughs> they that, so that. And that's 280000 yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Jeez. So, okay. Um, no, I wasn't asking to lengthen it. I just yeah. didn't know if there was any. Just, I mean, like the year-round kids had two more weeks of school than everybody else right. this year. You know, right. so. Yeah, good point. Well, I do have to say, passing on the teachers, that since I have all my daycare kids, the Zoom meetings have been amazing. My kids have thoroughly enjoyed it, and the teachers were good and, and asked some questions and, and worked in, are you working on your homework? I mean, you know, I just thought they have done, the ones I have, the kids have done just an amazing job. Uh, they just, they were a little scared at first, but now they're really talking. They want to know when their next Zoom meeting is, so. I would I'd pass it on to the rest of the administrators. I mean, I've been amazed how well everybody's done the, you know, best with this situation. Um, the administration's worked hard to get things out. Um, I've been amazed at, as a parent at my kids' teachers. I'm not surprised at all of how they stepped up to the plate. And I'm sure, I mean, you could go across the district with that. So, um, you know, thanks to all the administrators and teachers that have worked tirelessly well, to get I this think done. You said it right, Ben. Everybody's doing the best they can, and 
a really uncommon situation. I would say that extends to the community of parents too, because you know there there are the, you know every everybody. It's tough for everybody, but some people really have some obstacles they're dealing with right now, and uh, and still people have been positive and just making the best of it. Thank you. Kudos to everybody. Can I move to adjourn? Yes. Hold on. Do we have any other? Are we going to? Shoot. No. No, nothing. Else, unless somebody else has some. I don't think. The young priors or, or young, what is it called? Young, young professionals. professionals. So that money, obviously, we have not used that because we didn't finish out the last, what? Yeah. I, I had a okay. call with uh, Seth this afternoon, Lampman, and uh, he's, I think he's past president, is it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So he... Uh, ben and myself, or uh, and Seth and some other members of that, we're going to sit down with John and go through everything and okay. make sure everything's good. So. Yeah, I don't want to make anybody right. mad. Anybody? I just have a question about the senior awards and all that. What are they going to do about all of that? The scholarships? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I mean, right now, I don't have a plan B for that, and that's... Uh, I don't know if there's a way to do it virtually or if, if that's something we potentially do. No, just get let them notify them in the mail if they. Yeah, you know. I, I mean I know that the councils because I, I see on uh, Twitter still communicating with kids about about scholarships and stuff. Scholarships as well. Uh, yeah. Dollars for scholars, every, everything else. So they you know they will get any award they got in terms of the, a program. I don't know if there's another plan for that. I haven't heard it. Um, you know, some, some of those things, unfortunately, I mean, right, right in front of seniors this week, you know, just missing out on a lot of stuff, you know. Yeah. And um, so I, I don't know, I don't know the ultimate plan for that. I know they'll, I assume they'll just be notified of their awards. Oh, yeah, no, I wasn't worried about that. So, I just didn't know, yeah. we didn't talk about it, so yeah. I just was asking. Well, I think the committee, or the, the community has really stepped up in doing the adopt a senior thing. It's a big thing. It is huge. That has been, I don't know if you guys are all on Facebook, where you can adopt a senior. I mean, I, the kids are, the parents and the kids are really, it's been neat. I thought it's been really neat. A lot of people in the community yep. that don't even have kids in school are adopting these kids. Oh, and, you know, we're sending out a card or whatever they want to do. But I yep. just thought that was really com commendable to the community for pulling yep. together. Yeah, it's very yeah. nice. One last thing, quick. Uh, we are kind of working on these little flyer things um, for students, parents, and teachers from like a mental health perspective. Just really quick, like one page flyers. I'll send it to you guys. Um, but just talking more of like, um, because I hear a lot of the, the people that are overwhelmed and can't balance it and they're kind of feel like they're not doing any part of their life justice right now because they're all out of balance. And so I've looked around at other districts and they had just done some quick wellness tips. And so we put, I put something little together to, and I'll shoot it to you guys, but just so you see that it's coming. There's one for students and then I'm going to, I'll make one for parents and teachers, but it just basically talks about remembering your brain breaks and, um, you know, a gratitude journal or check in with one person every day and you can actually schedule, connect time into a schedule. So it talks about creating a schedule and a routine and, um, just making sure they understand that life still goes on outside of everything we're expecting them really good. to do. So I'll send it to you guys and see if it's not something we can just put out there so they know we're thinking of them too. I'm going to try what? again. What? No. <laughs> oh, I move to adjourn. Second. There, we've got a second. <laughs> okay. You better get All out the door. Get out the door. Oh, oh, right. Holy <laughs> The hardest most to make with this girl. One of these yeah. days. Bye, Carolyn. Good talking to you. Bye, Carolyn. One of these days, I'm going to beat you to the uh, motion to adjourn. <laughs>